Located in the Berkeley Hills in California, Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory is home to the Advanced Light Source, a synchrotron light source funded by the U.S. Department of Energy. The ALS mission is to advance science for the benefit of society by providing our world-class synchrotron light source capabilities and expertise to a broad scientific community. From infrared through visible light and ultraviolet, all the way to x-rays, this facility provides light for research in biology, chemistry, physics, and the environmental sciences. Let's take a look at how the ALS generates light through the use of electrons. The life of an electron here at the ALS starts in the LENAC, which is composed of three major parts, the electron gun, the buncher, and the linear accelerator. The electron gun houses a high melting point metal, in this case a tungsten alloy, which is heated up to 1000 degrees Celsius so that its electrons boil off. A strong positive charge occurs in intervals of 500 millionths of a second, which causes the electrons to fly towards the buncher in bunches. The buncher's main job is to accelerate the electrons out of the electron gun by channeling microwave radiation for the electrons to ride on like a circle. By the time the electrons leave the LINAC and enter the booster room, they're traveling very near the speed of light. The booster ring's main purpose is to speed up the electrons, but why not stick with the LINAC gun? We've just established that it does this, right? The answer is simple. It's just more efficient to speed up electrons if they're traveling in a circle and not a line. The main purpose of why you go around in circles is you can repeatedly accelerate in just one microwave cavity. So in the booster, we go around roughly two to three million times during acceleration and every time the beam is going around it would only get accelerated by a small amount. So we reuse the one accelerating cavity we have there over and over. But why do this anyway? Why do the electrons need to be sped up so fast? The simple answer is wavelength. When electrons move, they give off light. In other words, radiation which, as we all know, has a wavelength. The faster the electrons are moving, the higher their energy, and thus the shorter their wavelength. The slower the electrons are moving, the lower their energy, and thus the longer their wavelength. In the case of the ALS, the interesting radiation that we want to get out of those electrons are X-rays. And, um, and the X-rays uh, are, are a kind of radiation that have a uh, uh, short uh, uh, wavelength. The storage ring is roughly circular with 12 arc-shaped sections, about 10 meters long, joined by 12 straight sections, about 6 meters long. Once the electrons enter the storage ring, they circulate for hours until the end of their life which usually ends once they bump into each other or the surface of the chamber they're circulating in. What are the conditions like inside the chamber anyway? Ideally, there would be absolutely nothing in there except for the electron beam, right? So we, we create a condition in there that is referred to as UHV, ultra high vacuum, which means we try to pump out of there all the all the gas uh, that normally surrounds us, right, in air, there's a lot of nitrogen, there's oxygen, uh, there's, there's other molecules. We try to pump all of that out of that vacuum chamber as, as, as good as we can. As for how the electrons are manipulated to follow the desired path, precision electromagnets focus and bend the electron beam as it circles the storage ring more than a million times a second. Berkeley's ALS is a very complex machine with many moving parts, but when it comes to the life of an electron, it generally comes down to being sped up enough that it reaches a large enough energy to give off light that spans the electromagnetic spectrum from infrared to x-rays.